Nietzsche continues his polemic against Socrates, saying that Socrates in the era of Euripides set consciousness as the creator and instinct was suppressed. By making everything intelligible, Socrates established an ideal in antagonism with the Dionysian within. All the Greek youths began to idealize this Greek figure that calmly went to his death, that embraced dying. Presumably, when the Dionysian attracted attention in the form of Greek tragedy, life was valued more than when the Hellenic gaze turned towards this strange phenomenon who knew nothing and obeyed an inner demon. Given that Socrates' intellect was in such control, he never really stared into the Dionysian abyss, and Greek tragedy must have seemed so frivolous to him. It spoke no real truths. It was curious distraction and adornment. Nothing of great value could be deciphered from it. It was something for the rather unintelligent. Thus, those playwrights influenced by Socrates minimized the Dionysian role and emphasized a cheerful optimism on stage, where virtue and happiness were brought into perfect harmony. It's interesting to note that just before Socrates dies, he finally heeds the apparition that had prodded him his whole life to make music. Nietzsche speculates that maybe in this moment, Socrates realizes that he may have overlooked the more fundamental wisdom of the Dionysian in the obsessive pursuit of logic.